Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Thursday, August 31st. The Jaguars are back at it again with some more roster moves, some expected roster moves, and some unexpected. We're going to dive into it here. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out GenJag.com shop to pick up some new Duval gear. Really appreciate y'all being here. So let's start with the bad news first. This is not unexpected, but defensive tackle Devon Hamilton has been placed on the reserve slash injured list, the IR for the Jaguars heading into the 2023 season, which means he will be unavailable for the first four weeks of the regular season. So he will miss your your matchups against the Colts, the Texans, the first of two matchups against both of those teams, the Chiefs and the Falcons. He'll be eligible to return from short-term IR following week four when the Jaguars take on the Bills in week five in London. We'll see if he's able to make that trip be geared up for that game or not. We'll see how it all plays out. But the bottom line is you're going to be missing your biggest interior defensive lineman, your nose tackle, your guy who can also play edge. He can have a versatile role for you up front as a run stuffer and someone who can push the pocket and penetrate. So Devon Hamilton was going into a big year, just got paid by the Jaguars this offseason. He's really developed at a high level over the last couple years, especially in 2022 under this new regime, this new coaching staff. So it's a bummer. He has the non-football injury uh, to his back, medical situation with his back. The Jaguars haven't been entirely clear about what's going on there. But as of right now, we do know he will miss at least the first four weeks of the regular season for the Jaguars. Um, So you have other guys that you think can step up, right? You know, Foley Fatu Kasi, he was dealing with a lower body injury, but he's supposed to be good to go. You obviously have Roy Robertson Harris, who you have a lot of confidence in. Jeremiah Ledbetter played very well throughout training camp in the preseason for the Jaguars. You have Adam Gotsis. You have a couple other rotational guys that you feel decent about. And you also added Angelo Blackson, who's a, a defensive tackle who has a lot of experience rotating up and down the line. He's played in a lot of different stops. Rotational player for you, hard worker, tough, physical, will get the job done in terms of effort. Um, So he's another guy that they can potentially rely on um, as a rotational interior defensive lineman while they wait on Devon Hamilton to come back from the short-term IR. Um, He most recently played in Chicago. He was signed by the Ravens this offseason, did not stick. But I think the Jaguars are able to get someone who has plenty of experience with this type of front and playing up and down the line of scrimmage. So I think that's a good move for them there. But uh, obviously you wish you had Devon Devon Hamilton the first four games of the year. Not going to happen. You also have Cooper Hodges heading to the short-term IR. The Jaguars late round pick in 2023 out of Baker out of Appalachian State by way of Baker County. Cooper Hodges is um, played tackle at Appalachian State, has been playing guard for the Jaguars, has done some really impressive things, especially in the run game. He's a strong, athletic kid at guard. Uh, so he'll, he'll miss the first four weeks of the regular season at the very least, unfortunately for him. But this was expected and also expected. The subsequent move here is the Jaguars bringing back Blake Hance, who will be their swing tackle to start the year with Cam Robinson on suspension with Josh Wells out for the season. Uh, Blake Hance will be their swing tackle, and he also can provide guard depth for you. Uh, the Jags, they released Blake Hance during roster cut day. They knew that they were going to bring him back as soon as they placed Cooper Hodges on the short-term IR, this was all expected. So no big deal there. The real news so far through this is is the Devon Hamilton um, being placed on, on injured reserve for the first four weeks of the regular season, which again, not shocking based on everything that's gone down over the last few weeks with the Devon Hamilton situation, but it is disappointing for the Jaguars defense nonetheless and disappointing for Devon Hamilton, who was having a fantastic training camp and preseason. Can't wait for him to get back on the field. I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to get back on the field himself, but going to have to wait at least that first four weeks. Now, beyond signing Angelo Blackson to replace Devon Hamilton um, on the 53-man roster, beyond bringing back Blake Hans to replace Cooper Hodges on the 53-man roster, you've got some practice squad signings as well. The Jaguars, they brought back Ayo Oyelola. Not a surprise there. He's their international uh, pathway player who basically gets a free spot on the practice squad that doesn't count against the practice squad. And they filled out the rest of their practice squad. If you want to see the first 13 players they brought in, you can go check out that video from yesterday. But the Jaguars have signed three more players to their practice squad. Josh Peterson was not a surprise at all. 
This has already been reported by Tom Pelissero that the Jaguars would be bringing back Doug Peterson's son as a practice squad tight end. Was he able to do some positive things throughout training camp and the preseason? Yes. Was he perfect? No. But I think this is fairly obvious. You know, Doug Peterson, he, he had his son come in here and put in work. Uh, he, he did very well in the USFL last year. He came in, he did his work, he fit in, and he's going to stick around on the practice squad here. And you also have two defensive linemen coming in on the practice squad. Tommy Togiai, who is a player that I'm surprised to see was available, quite frankly. I think he definitely has a bright future in front of him out of Ohio State. He's tough. He's physical as hell. So I think that getting him in here and and having him on your practice squad could definitely pay off long term if you're able to keep him around and develop him. And then you've also got, and forgive me if I mispronounce this name, Asazi Oto Mehu. This is another defensive lineman that the Jaguars are bringing in for for depth, for long-term play. Uh, they think that he could potentially bring something to the to the table. I'm not familiar with him, so I'm not going to really provide too much of a comment there. But again, the big news here is Devon Hamilton out for the first four weeks of the season. Cooper Hodges out for the first four weeks of the season. Blake Hance as your swing tackle behind Anton Harrison and Walker Little for the first four weeks until Cam Robinson comes back. And then Angelo Blackson being added to the 53-man roster for depth, the guy who can play um, defensive tackle, defensive end, you know, one tech, three tech, five tech can move around the front. He's big, he's physical, he's tough, and he gives um, full effort. A high motor player, no doubt about it. So that's the major news here. Jaguars also fill out that practice squad. The Jags are just over a week away from their regular season week one matchup, the season opener against the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis. That's next Sunday, 1 p.m. Looking forward to it. But uh, as of now, the Jaguars, Devon Hamilton, out for four weeks. Cooper Hodges, out for four weeks. Both of them on the short-term IR. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content here, again, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out ginjag.com shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.